Hi, this is Gina Petrie, as you know, and I'm kicking off our 489 course, the very first unit, in my kitchen. Why in my kitchen? Why not in a classroom, as will usually be when I give a lecture? Um, you'll see in a few minutes as I tell my story. So the purpose of this very first unit of 489 is to explore one particular cultural and linguistic group in the U.S. and how they were responded to in the past. So what we're going to do is, is kind of take a look at the historical response and compare that to what's happening today. It'll provide, if it works, it'll provide a really nice base for us to think about all of the current groups. So the group that I want to talk about are actually German Americans. And specifically, I want to talk about my father's mother named Mabel. Now, I grew up in Indiana. I grew up on the farm that my father was born on and raised on, and not far from a little area called Four Corners. And um, if that doesn't sound typical, US Midwest, I don't know what does. And so my grandmother, Mabel, grew up um, right near Four Corners on a farm. And she attended a one-room schoolhouse, as most kids did then in Indiana, and she attended it with all of her siblings. The school went to eighth grade, which was the amount of education that she needed to be incredibly successful in her life. She learned enough there to support her own kids with education. She learned enough to um, help take care of the farm and the business of the farm, including raising chickens and selling eggs. And uh, she was quite successful. I actually have a picture of her. Let's see. I will also post it so that you can see it more clearly. This is kind of hard to do backwards, but this is her right here. Okay. And what I want you to know about that schoolhouse is that everything that occurred there occurred in German. And this wasn't unique. In, in fact, there were many schools in the Midwest, um, especially near Chicago, in which everything that occurred happened in the German language. Now, why would that be? That happened because schools um, were taught in the language of the community that they served. So if the farm families around that school spoke German or another language, that's the language the kids were served in. They found a teacher who spoke in that language and, and that's the way they were taught. So everything she learned in school, she learned in German and it served her quite well. Now you might be wondering, why am I speaking English? Why am I not speaking German? Why did I have to study German as a foreign language in high school and in college? Why didn't I just know it? Why wasn't I bilingual? Well, what we need to do is we need to go back to the very moment that everything changed in the Midwest and including in the US. Um, and that was around 1917 as the US was anti um, German sentiment was really beginning to boil over as World War I, the Great War, um, was taking off and the U.S. was getting involved. And when that occurred, people in the U.S. began to see their German neighbors, the very people that they traded with and worked with and prayed with um, all those years together, they began to see them as the enemy. And some quite dangerous things happened, especially in Wisconsin and Minnesota. There were people who were attacked physically and hurt. For families like mine, um, the, the um, response in, in our family was that we stopped speaking German, for the most part. Um, my father told me that he remembers when he was growing up, if he walked into the kitchen at a gathering and the women were there, um, he wouldn't be able to understand them because they were speaking German. And so it became a kitchen language, which is why I'm taping here in a kitchen today. So, um, so what happened was the language that was the very language that my family thought in 
uh, basically almost entirely disappeared within a couple of generations. I'm guessing that there are a lot of cultural pieces that still show up in my family, and we'll talk about those a little bit in the next unit. But, um, but for the most part, the language is entirely gone. That can happen very quickly within a family. So one of the things that I wanted to do is to make sure that you have a sense of what our purpose is in Unit 1 in this first part. So what now I've told you my family story and I've told you the loss of our heritage language, German, I want us to explore together through video and text that story in a different way. So not just my personal anecdote, but what shows up beyond that. So the place I want you to go next is I want you to watch an excerpt from a movie that came out called Sweetland. And um, you're welcome to watch the entire movie if you want, but I'm really only asking you to watch about, I think it's about 15 minutes in the excerpt, and it'll say in Canvas how much to watch. And in that movie, what you will see is you'll see a young woman who is basically a mail order bride. It's been arranged by a young man's parents who think she would be a good bride for him. She arrives and the idea is that they will go directly to the church and get married so that she can join him on his farm in, I believe it's Minnesota. But um, it's discovered that she's actually a German speaker. And this is right about 1917. And so what you're going to see is what is the response that's given at that point. If the movie interests you, um, I encourage you to watch the whole thing. It's, it's really amazing. But after you watch that excerpt, then switch gears and take a look at some, um, some very brief, I think there's three or four very brief articles, um, very readable, that talk about um, German schools, um, how things operated in Chicago, including in Chicago um, before 1917 when there were public meetings there would actually be two separate speakers. If you wanted to listen to the meeting in English you went to listen to this speaker and if you wanted to listen in German you went to that speaker. So what you'll, what you'll read about is you'll read about the realities of how things were and then the realities of how things began to change. After that, there are three document artifacts I'd like you to take a look at. One of them is a piece of US propaganda that was attempting to whip up anti-German sentiment right about 1917. And um, trigger, trigger warning, it does involve a dog, a dachshund, which is, if you're not familiar, that's um, a kind of a cultural symbol connected with the culture of, of Germany. Another thing that I want you to read is a pledge that was created specifically for children in schools and for their teachers to say, and it was the beginning of the war on language in the U.S., and um, I believe that the pledge was created around 1914. A lot of people were using it in their schools in 1917. But take a look through there and, um, and see how it was that they were attempting to, to shame children about their home language, the way that they use language in their families. And um, finally, the last piece of, uh, the last artifact I want you to take a look at is the very newspaper article from an Indiana newspaper that announced when the decision was made to no longer use German in Indiana schools. And so you can see the, the, the actual very day that things changed for my family then. Um, and so after you do all of that, after you've kind of thought through that, where I want you to go next is to go to our very first discussion. So it'll say Unit 1, Part 1 discussion, and essentially what it's asking you to reflect on is, do you see any connections with today? So we often hear that the only purpose for thinking about history is to inform us today. So see if you see any of those connections, and if any light bulbs go off on how we might be treating other groups at, at the same time. Okay, I hope you enjoyed hearing about my family, and I look forward to seeing you in the Unit 1, Part 1 discussion. Bye.